And thank you again for joining us. Uh, for the next segment, we are going to kick over to our panel for a couple of questions. Really appreciate your time. Um, one issue that's very contentious in the area is casinos. And I'm sure our viewers and our readers would be very interested in hearing uh, your thoughts on the current effort to re repeal the casino. So gentlemen, uh, casino issue. Mr. Leahy, we can start with you this time. So um, as I've stated publicly before, I, I am not for casinos. I don't think that the panacea that will fix all of the social ills or the ec economic ills of the region. I think that we need to, um, at, at the same time, there's a referendum coming up. So we need to respect the will of the voters. And uh, while I'm personally against them and I will be voting against the casinos, uh, we need to make sure that the teeth are put in place, put in the legislation to make sure that the promises that are made are the promises that are kept. And one of the things that I will work with uh, when I become the next state senator is I will make sure that the teeth are in place so that that, that law actually will constrict them to fulfilling those promises. Okay, Oppose to casinos and support the repeal effort. Gotcha. Uh, Mr. Hopewell. Uh, I want to make one thing very clear, uh, that I'm voting to repeal casino. Mm -hmm. And I also want to make my position crystal clear on this. And that is casino corporations as a whole, I believe, uh, prey on the most vulnerable in our communities. Uh, I don't believe they're in the best interest of this district, and I don't believe they're in the best interest of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, I believe, at best, it's a temporary fix. I believe they create much greater problems than they solve. What we really need to be doing is focusing on health care reform, on corrections reform, and we need to be investing in our children, in our children's education, uh, instead of these hollow promises from casinos. We need to focus on long-term jobs in this area, and we need to focus on, on strategies that make our communities much stronger instead of relying on empty casino dollars. So I guess in relation to this, um, if, if not casinos, um, you know, then what? Uh, I think you know what we've seen here in Springfield, um, a lot of the folks that we talked to that supported the, um, the host community agreement, we voted for it last July, um, they saw it as pretty much we have limited options, you know. Um, you know, Holyoke's much like Springfield, you know, it's been through, you know, its uh, own economic downturn and had a really hard time through the recession. Um, you know, I guess what do you say to the folks that say, if not the casino, then what? You know, what's, how do you respond to that, uh, Mr. Leahy? When I'm, <clears throat> again, when I'm talking to the voters, door knocking in Agawam, it's an issue, Southwick, Holyoke, Chicopee, of course. Uh, we've got to create the pipeline. Just the other day, I was on a call in Holyoke in a factory in downtown Holyoke. Actually, some people drive by and think it's a vacant factory, but in fact, there is a manufacturing alive and well. Uh, we were there for some business, and I noticed that there was three people sitting in the lobby. And during uh, the conversation that I had with the party I was there to see, I found out that these people were actually testing to become welders for this company. But they didn't have the proper skills as a welder quite yet to fill. So now we have a company in Holyoke that has jobs open. We have people that want those jobs, but they don't have the skills yet. So again, that goes back to the skill gap. Mm -hmm. And in our manufacturing, and I was very happy to see that uh, Congressman Kennedy, uh, uh, excuse me while I look at my notes, the Revitalized American mm -hmm. Manufacturer Innovation Act of 2003, backed by the AFL-CIO. Mm -hmm. It's about bringing the skill gaps up to where they need to be, so the skills that people ha have so they can get the jobs that are out there right now. Building those partnerships between the manufacturing institutions and the local community you colleges. You've got to work collaboratively through the, exactly, all the way down to okay. the Volk School. So, I mean, we've got, you've got great paying jobs. There's a company up in Greenfield that, again, can't hire enough good people. And these are all people making very good dollars, raising families. These are good jobs locally in the Pioneer Valley that we just aren't right now um, providing a skilled workforce for. Gotcha. Um, Mr. Hopewell. Uh, I'm going to conclude with, uh, I don't think we can afford to gamble on the future of our local communities with the hollow promises of casinos. You look at across the country of all the inner casinos, and most of those are in financial difficulty. And uh, I don't think it's right for the district, and I don't think it's right for the Commonwealth. I think there's many other areas that we can invest in, and we can do much better than depending on casino, casinos. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, next question, we are going to go to the panel. Uh, Jane Kaufman. Thank you. Um, considering the medical marijuana proposal, uh, medical marijuana dispensary proposal was rejected in Holyoke, uh, what, 
what are your uh, what is your opinion of having medical marijuana dispensary in your district, and what is your what is your opinion of that in uh, the, the Commonwealth? All right, so gentlemen, we're talking about the medical marijuana issue. Um, Mr. Hopewell, you can start off here. Certainly, uh, when we look at the evidence-based literature, and I've done some research on this, when you look at uh, the clinical trials that have been doc well documented in the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, in the American Journal of Neurology, uh, there's clear evidence that support the uh, efficacy of medical marijuana, and we certainly uh, have seen the evidence-based trials that, that show that uh, there are very positive palliative measures uh, in response to diseases like cancer, uh, neuromuscular disorders like m m multiple sclerosis. Uh, it certainly helps with uh, reducing seizures, uh, it helps with glaucoma, with pressures in the eyes. And certainly uh, the FDA and the DEA uh, have currently approved one drug called Marinol. And Marinol is the uh, pill form of THC, which is the uh, part of a the, uh, the business end of marijuana. Mm -hmm. And certainly, we need more clinical trials, and I will support more clinical trials for the use of Mar Marinol to, to help people get through nausea, vomiting, uh, and other wasting uh, areas that I think medical dispensaries will help greatly, and the drug marijuana will help greatly. Okay, so, so you would support um, yes. one in well, the district? Without a doubt. Right. I think okay. the, the law is very clear. I don't think, uh, the, especially the process involved right now with medical dispensaries, uh, I think the law is very clear. Uh, I, I believe that we can do a lot of good for the folks that are suffering, and I believe we can improve their quality of life mm -hmm. with medical marijuana. There's clearly evidence-based literature that supports it. Gotcha. Uh, Mr. Leahy. I fully support medical marijuana, as I've stated publicly before. I think a, a, a physician should be able to prescribe anything that to, would make their uh, patient uh, help their patient. We shouldn't stand in the way of what a doctor can prescribe to his patient. Uh, my issue arises with the, uh, what I'm hearing from the people is that they're, they're afraid of this, another level of bureaucracy being created to create these dispensaries. What we need is a state senator who can work with the federal delegation hand in hand to get medical marijuana legalized on the federal level and then you should be able to pick it up at your CVS or your local pharmacy with uh, your insulin and your other medications. Uh, but to create another level of uh, bureaucracy, it just doesn't look right. And uh, Hoyoaks was rejected for, uh, for several reasons. Uh, and, uh, but for medical marijuana, again, there's no reason that the government should stand in the way, and I certainly wouldn't, of a doctor prescribing what he thinks is the most efficacious for his patient. So you're both in support of medical marijuana and a potential dispensary in the district? Clearly. Uh, however, yes. uh, when you look at the effects and the benefits of medical marijuana, uh, this, this state, we can't wait. Uh, I believe that certainly uh, within all districts, they're, they're within 15 or 20 miles, and that that is important for now. Uh, certainly there's bureaucracy, but Massachusetts is ready to do this now, and patients demand it, and I think they need it. Uh, yeah, and just to clarify for the viewers, uh, medical marijuana did pass by a statewide referendum and thus created the law which established dispensaries uh, throughout the Commonwealth. Um, all right, we are going to take another quick break, and we'll be back with the next segment momentarily. <laughs>